How you doing? I'm Brian Garacci. Um, I presented here before about a year, year and a half ago, and I wanted to present again about something I've been working on called Parallax.js. It's JavaScript, not Lisp, but it has some Lisp flavor in there, so I thought you guys might be interested. So this project is uh, really the amalgam of a few things I've been working on over the last few years. So firstly, it's based partly on a project that I've been involved with for a couple of years called Chapel, which is a supercomputing programming language from Cray. Um, it's also, my company uses Node.js for all of its building. And so a lot of this was inspired by like, well, let's see if we can take some of these Chapel ideas and make them in Node.js. And so there's a couple of features that I thought that would be pretty neat to do. So one of which is, with Chapel, you can write your code once, and then it scales depending on how many servers you give it. And so the, basically, you can run it on your laptop, or you can run it on a supercomputer. And one of the things that Chapel does that's also interesting as a language is that it gives you fine-grained control over data parallelism and task parallelism. So you can spread your data across multiple machines and also spread your tasks in various interesting ways across multiple machines. And I think those are two really useful features of the, of the Chapel language. And one other thing that Node gives you and JavaScript gives you is dynamic compilation or dynamic evaluation, which is a very Lispy type feature. And that, that creates a tool where uh, once the server, infra the cluster is running, you don't need to actually deploy anything new to run your code, uh, new Parallax JS code. So really fast, REPLI type um, flavor. So one of the basic concepts in, in Parallax.js is the concept of a locale. So a locale is typically a compute resource that has both compute and memory. And so those are typically servers you can think of it. And so what Parallax does is basically creates a fully connected graph of all the nodes in the cluster using WebSockets. And so your application connects to this one of each of these nodes and then basically broadcasts its program as appropriate to one or more of the nodes, and then the program spreads itself across the cluster as it needs to, according to what it's going to do. And so this is really the whole topology about how it works. And so a simple example is hello worlds. And so this example has a, uses a few keywords that get exposed to you. So this is actually raw JavaScript that has um, mem runs in a runs in a v virtual machine, the Node.js virtual machine, and it, which injects keywords and variables and other functions into your space so that you can just access them directly. So locales is a, is a collection of all the locales in your cluster. Map is basically what you would expect. So you're mapping over all the locales. For each locale, you run a Lambda function, which is on this locale, do the following, which is use a function called write line to print out hello from locale. And then here is, here is the locale of where you are and its ID. So what this does is it basically runs hello world and all the locales, which then report their, their ID back to the client. And this is what would print out locally is the hello, hello from locale 0, 1, 2, 3. And so one of the main interesting examples of um, Chapel is like how do you do A plus B equals C across a large, cl large cluster as kind of like a basis of interest. And so here you have... Um, say four locales, and you have distributed memory, so you break up your vector across each locale. And so the blues are all the blue, each color is its own locale. Okay, and then basically what you want to do is do addition across all these so that the final result is C, and that gets added up. So the code for this looks kind of a little bit more complicated, but you create a domain which tells you how to distribute your memory. You create A and B, and then you do the zip to create C. And then you print out the result, which is all threes here. You can also set your scope using the with operator, which basically injects variables remotely into your context so that you can do b times 2, with b having been set to 8. And so where I want to go with this a little bit more is, you know, I think that JavaScript is probably not the best language to write this in, so it would be nice to do some transpiling, also create a web-based REPL, and some visualization about how the locales are interacting. So you can check this out on my GitHub, uh, Brian, GU, and Parallax.js.
talk a little bit about where you're using this and that can help provide Where am I using it? Yeah. Just in general? Yeah. So um, I think we're not using it in production or anything yet, but I think it's a, an extension of some of the stuff that I've been doing, which is using WebSockets to create chat clients and things like this. And I saw the power of how Node made certain things really easy. And you know, with JavaScript, you can turn, if you do two string on a function, you get its source code. So it was like really natural to basically think of like how you would just run code over there by just serializing the function. So what I'd like to do is basically experiment with this to do analytics. So you could basically imagine each locale having some or all pieces of the data and then writing functions which just distribute it out and then return the results back as an interesting you know, experimental way of doing kind of like a analytics kind of computing. The two print is not very portable for different, uh, different web browsers on the function. And also it doesn't capture the closure, right? So right, right. So but this is pretty much all in the back end. So that's why you have the with operator, so that you can basically inject variables into your scope to create what you want there. Uh, the with operator is also very slow if you're using the JavaScript. So yeah, so what I'm doing now is code caching. So if you reevaluate re the same function, it uses the VM code cache. This is not also not very fast yet, but so far it's been useful. Any more? Okay.